So today we're going to talk about draft site for the AutoCAD user and th the similarities between the two, um, how how easy it is to learn. So essentially, if you know um, AutoCAD, you're going to know draft sites. So it speaks your language, it speaks the AutoCAD language, it is able to open the same files, it's able to save the same files. So we're gonna, I'm going to walk you through the similarities between the two and then point out some places where you can where you can customize it um, on your own or a little more and then also where you can find the common things that you're used to changing inside AutoCAD. All right. This over here. Okay, so the low learning curve of what I was just talking about is um, if you're not, if you're already an AutoCAD user, there's not much training that really needs to happen. Um, more of here's where these buttons are and here's where this is. Um, so you'll see that when I get into some of these, when I talk to you about it, it'll be very familiar to if you're familiar to AutoCAD, the draft site functionality is very similar and the same. So the first one we're going to take a look at is them side by side by each other. Draft site comparison. Um, of course, it won't work. Let's see here. It can open this specific. Okay, so let's just do this. Let me just skip this one. We'll come back to that. And then the look and feel of the two bars. I'll show you what these are here in a minute after I go through this. Um, the, the common look and feel of the two bars in the menus. So I'll show you what that looks like. Similar commands and keyboards in autocomplete when you type in the fil filter essentially of the keyboard commands you're looking for um, on that. And then from there, you also get your auto list commands and your API now supports uh, visual auto list as well. Batch printing options that you have available to you. And then something a little bit on the SolidWorks side of things where you can have mouse gestures and things like that on the SolidWorks side, very similar similarities between that. There's more, much more than that that's kind of similar to, to a SolidWorks user, but um, we're going to talk today more about draft site and the similarities between AutoCAD. Okay, so supported file types. Um, normally, a lot of time we get asked, you know, is it a viewer? Is it, can it, you know, can we edit uh, AutoCAD files? Yes, you can edit DWGs, DXF, DWTs, um, all that you can do. Um, so your ability to do that is available to you. Um, you can import, of course, the same DXF, DWG. You also can import DGN, which are Bentley files, so MicroStation, and also PDFs. Um, you can export out as JPEGs, PDFs, PNGs, and SVG files. Um, you can attach many image files. The common culprits are there. The BMP, the GIF, JPEG, PNG, TIFFs are available as well. And the file formats where you can save out as different file formats as well. Um, like we were talking about earlier, DWG, DXF, DWT, PDF, and so on, okay? And if we look here, um, this, we can go back as far as 30 years, uh, go back in draft site, just like you can inside AutoCAD and save down to different levels and different versions of draft sites. So back all the way back to R12. So that's circa, I would say right around 94. 93, 1993, around that time frame. So we can go back that far. So identical keyboard shortcuts. Uh, it's that it is exactly that. They're identical. So if I type in my keyboard shortcuts, I'm used to. So I type in line or L for line. That is there. Uh, your F2 buttons are there. Your ortho, your snap, your polar, your E track, all that is there as well. It, what also is there on your F buttons and some of your other ones is when you type in your commands, um, there are what we call aliases inside draft site. So this is where we talk about draft site speaks your language. There's aliases inside there that in erase, when you type in erase inside AutoCAD, which equals delete in draft site, I can type in either one in it knows to delete or erase what I'm what I'm doing. I can create my own aliases if I want to as well. If we if I choose to do so. Same thing with e grips. You can double click and get entity grips. You can type in UCSZ and do a reference. Everything's very much the same. Uh, split equals break. So inside AutoCAD, if you want to break a line into two, you would type in break, 
and select that line and make it into two segments. In draft site, it's called split, just like it is in, in sketching for, for SolidWorks. So you type in either one, the alias is there, and it knows what you want to do. We get property painter so we can match properties, lists, you know, we can list the, the identity uh, properties of the of the actual individual um, entity, so line, a dimension, whatever that is. Another alias, very common, is purge and clean. Purge inside draft site is 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 there as as clean. You can type either one in. Um, AutoCAD people are used to typing in purge, but you can again type either one in. It knows what you want. If you look at the clean um, alias dialog box, if you type either one in, you get your clean box, but it's very similar to what exactly the looks very similar to what the AutoCAD is as well. Some of these are in here just for your reference. I'm not going to read all of them to you. So, of course, you know, you get into the well, the very common ones. We type in O for offset, RO for rotate. We can do a reference one. Like I said, we can do trim, the traditional trim, or we have power trim. We can type in power trim like people are used to inside SolidWorks sketching. That actually came from draft site, so that people that use SolidWorks every day and use the power trim, that actually came from draft site. So it's a nice tool that got added to, um, to SolidWorks. And so helping each other out. So extend is there, EX for extend is a keyboard shortcut. Of course, all the buttons are there. I'll show you what that looks like here in a minute. All your buttons are there as well if you don't prefer keyboard shortcuts, but I know a lot of AutoCAD people do. They prefer keyboard shortcuts. So again, here's your, just as a reference to everyone so that when this becomes available to you, you can have it is, you know, spade bar, it can be your enter key. It can also do the next command if you want to, if you want to make the enter key or the space bar, you can go ahead and, and customize those as, as much as you see fit based on that. Okay, you can do blocks, W blocks, insert blocks, all that kind of stuff you can do. You can also do P for pan and zoom window, um, zoom extends, zoom previous. So zoom extends for everyone is like fit, right? We can do the fit function. So zoom extends for that. That's very similar. Those are off a little bit. And then your layer commands, um, you do have a command manager for any for the layer command as well. You have it in your classic mode or your ribbon mode from the from the toolbars or I'm so used to typing them in. They're still in my head uh, every day. So the years were very similar to what you're used to for your reference for layers. Okay, so identical commands are just more some more you get into it where we can specify toolbars. So we can turn on two bars if we want to turn on two bars. We can turn on the ribbon. We'll get more into that here in a, in a minute. So we can right click and get our E extensions. We also have list commands that are that are buried that are used in both. That which is a very common one is which in outside AutoCAD, which is overkill, which actually equals discard duplicates inside draft site. Again, and when I'm in draft site, I could type either one in, and I get this functionality that you see here where I can actually. C lines on top of lines, right? That never happens in the 2D world. So overkill and discard duplicates, type in either one. Okay. Auto, so you can load auto list commands. You know, um, this flattened one was, oh wow. I'm just trying to think when I first had that one. 1998, 1999. So that, that one still works. A lot of them still work, most of them do. Um, so if you have older ones uh, like this, you can go ahead and load them. This is just showing you to load it one at a time, but we could also put it in the start menu and have it load it when you open uh, and start your session of draft site as well. Okay, here's where we can choose our profiles. So this is like the classic setup where you have the pull downs and then we can create right click and turn on a bunch of toolbars and position them wherever we want all over your screen. However you want to do that. Um, so here's the way to do it, just as a reference to you. So you can right click up, up in the gray area and you go to toolbars and then you can actually turn on them on and then pick which ones you want. And then once you get them where you want to, just like in, in SolidWorks and the other ones, you can actually lock them or dock them when they're when you get them where you want them, so you don't accidentally move them and drag them someplace. So here's where you can go ahead and right click and then you can specify which toolbars you want and you can also go inside here and customize your toolbars and your buttons. Uh, the buttons that are going in the toolbars or as an individual button or a toolbar, create your own toolbar to do that. You can go ahead and create, add a command 
to do that. And I'll get some more slides that I'll show you a little later that shows you how to do that. Okay, so shortcut keys and override keys. So here's where we can go on the keyboard. Um, here's your shortcut keys are the been defined. And then we can go and use override keys to, to do whatever we want. And we can also change those the existing ones that are there if we want to if we want to change the default one, we can. Okay, here's where the aliases are located. This is just kind of for your reference. Here's where we can create new aliases. That's what that new button's there for. And also we can choose a different alias or a different command the way from what it's linked to right now. So different ways of doing it. You can import them uh, from someone else. So you can actually export them to some other user. And then they can use the import tool to import them if you come up with your own customizations that you want to do. Very similar. Batch printing. Batch printing is available. There's multiple places to go get it. Um, all kinds of buttons everywhere. It works very similar to what you're used to in AutoCAD, where we can actually do files. We can do folders. Um, these are just different locations for you where to find it. Depends on what if you're running the ribbon or the classic mode. And we'll see here that we can actually go in and we can add files. We can add folders. We can control select what we're doing from there and go ahead and we can search by type as well. Or sort by type. Okay, here's the alternate versions that we can save. Um, and we can do this as a file save as, as at any time, or we can set this in our default that we want to save as. So maybe we're working with a customer that has an older version of AutoCAD. We have to save down to 2010 versus 20, 2021 or 2018 is the last version. So um, you can do that and save that as for a project. You could turn that to whatever version you want. And then when you click save, it'll save it down to that lower version. And that way, when you want to save things, you don't have to do a file save as each time. It'll just save it to the lower version. Same thing here when that's where you see the save as. Um, you could always, anytime, go in there and do a file save as as anything that you want. Okay. So here's a classic pull down, uh, which I'm a big fan of. I like the pull downs and I like the, all the toolbars just because that's the way I learned. Um, so in 2016, he introduced the ribbon style. So we can very similar to what uh, Windows is and also what AutoCAD is as well. As far as the window style, everything is very much the same, if not the similar. We can make our own custom one as well, whatever you want to name it. We also have right click graphics display. We, this is the common one we can add. We can actually grab the drafting options and do last command. We could do um, when we right click, we can have a different something else come up as well. We can kind of fully customize that. We can right mouse, right mouse, mouse button click and get our co copy and paste different options that way. And then also if we remote, we hold the shift key down and right mouse button click, we can actually get our e snaps. And if we click on the e snaps, we can actually get to go to the settings that actually allow us to customize which ones we want on automatically. So we get into the colors. So if you like colors, you want to change your colors to what you want. You like the black background. You want your cursors um, to be white versus the versus the red and uh, green Christmas colors. You can go in here. If you notice, I have the model background as a black. But then a few up there is the X and Y. I can actually click on that X and Y and change that to, to white instead of the like the green and the um the green and the red colors that they are by default so completely up to you make it look just like autocad same thing with the crosshairs i like the crosshairs all the way over this has always been a debate um but normally out of the box they're set at five percent which are just crosshairs or so and the hundred percent go all the way across horizontally and all the way across for up and down vertical um, so that's where you can change that as well when we want to do automatic save locations, so for, for for auto save and backup, we can define where we want to put those, and also we can also change the the time that we can save the document back as well each time. And then reverse zoom wheel. This is if you uh, so if you are an AutoCAD user and you want to keep it the same in AutoCAD, don't check this button. If you want to make your mouse wheel in draft site act like the original standard um, SOLIDWORKS, which is kind of backwards of what AutoCAD is, we would check this on if you want your draft site to act just like the 
default settings in SolidWorks does when you scroll in and out. Okay. So if you, if you like what AutoCAD is, don't check that box, essentially. So we can turn on our coordinate system. I know this is always a debate. People like it. Some people drive them crazy. This is where you can make turn it off and make it look like AutoCAD. And here's where you can change your scale factor. And again, these are for your reference later on when you want to go and change these once you uh, get in the system. Here's where you can change the, 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 the precision based on the whole entire document. So the, the file that you're in, that DWG DX, the DXF file, that's will change everything. So like a system setting for the file. Um, so that for that document, and then also we're able to individually change the dimensions to two place for whatever we want other than this, but the ones that we're actually typing in or, or entering in, this is what changes the units for the whole system. Okay, here's where we can create a keyboard shortcut. So what we can do here is essentially go into our keyboard shortcuts and then click in where we want to put the key and hit and then I'll change it. I'm going to do an F12 button here for an example. So I'm going to click on that plus there where it says step one on left mouse, we click on that. And then I'm going to actually click inside that box and hit my F12 key. So my F12 and then from there, I'm going to filter search what I want to put there, which is smart calculator. So I'm going to left mouse button drag that into that command name line. And down at the bottom there, it shows that I once I click apply, now when I hit my F12 key, I will get a calculator. Okay. So I can go ahead and create those, all those different kind of shortcuts and all those kind of customizations to, until you're happy with what you have. These are just some of the other calculators that you can do in the aliases and, and things that are similar to what you see in, in AutoCAD, but just showing you that the alias in draft site is actually cleaner than the one that's in um, AutoCAD. If you look, you gotta do the underscore OSC ALC for, for calc the calculator, or you can draft site, you can just type in CAL and hit enter. So nice. There's another shortcut that people ask about is um, you type in, or you actually hit control one and you get your properties menu to show up at any time. Um, and then you hit control one again, it just goes away on the either the left or right hand side. That's not where you have it located or have it pinned to. And then the other one is very common is the, the design center um, in SOLIDWORKS. Um, sorry, and um, draft site, we call that design resources. That's where we can have that in here. And this is where we can quickly co copy styles from one drawing to another. Okay. Just some of the system requirements for your reference. Um, there actually is less of a system requirement for draft site because the software is only 10 years old. So there's a lot, not a lot of extra baggage that's in, in the code. So it actually runs a little much leaner than what Draft side has been running for 40 years. So um, 10 versus 40. So it's actually runs a little leaner and a little, a little more faster. Okay. And here's for the Mac. Okay. So that being said, um, there's different versions of, of draft site. There's draft site enterprise and enterprise plus draft site. Uh, either one of the enterprises here allows you to do network licensing. So you can host it on the SOLIDWORKS SNL, or if you are not a current SOLIDWORKS um, SNL uh, user or not a SOLIDWORKS customer, you can also do um, what they call a DSLS, which is a draft site um, uh, SNL, or essentially. So it's a, it's a draft, a decimal system license manager where you can manage the licenses that way. Okay, if you, but if you already have a, a SOLIDWORKS SNL, you can actually load your licenses on the SNL. The SNL just needs to be upgraded to 2021 to run draft site 2021. And then you can manage your licenses just like you do your SOLIDWORKS one on that one. Okay. So some of the new stuff that's in 2021, there's visual list. That's that's a nice one. That's a that's one that's there. So we were able to do that uh, directly without having to reconfigure or recreate them. Um, this edition was added in 2021. It's available on Pro and Premium. So that means it's available in Draft Site Enterprise and Draft Site Plus as well. And also right here with associative patterns, this is where we can drop and drag quickly to modify a, a pattern location. So it's uh, changed instances. It's just like a shortcut that's there. 
that's in draft site premium, or that would be draft site, that would be draft site enterprise plus. Okay. So we have the ability, these have been recent, but not in this 2021 year where we, where it does support dynamic blocks. So you can edit and, and control those blocks inside draft site now, the dynamic blocks. People don't know what dynamic blocks are. They're like a, if you think of a SOLIDWORKS, they're like a configuration of parts. They're like a family of, of blocks that are similar, but different, uh, different sizes or something. So think of like a door, uh, a door frame or something like that. You would have different door widths and thicknesses, but though they could be all located underneath one uh, dynamic block. And then you can pick which one you want and transition between them and, and pick whichever one you want active. And that's available in all versions of draft site. Same thing with auto dimension and auto arrange dimensions. That's very familiar to the SOLIDWORKS users on drawings. Very similar uh, type setting where we can do auto dimension and do auto arrange really quick. And then preview what you have. And then there's a the 3D content central task pane so we can accept that right from draft site. Okay. It's not available yet on Mac versions. And we also have draft site connected where we can actually uh, link up to the cloud and link up to the 3D platform and use it for data management and use have some place to save our files other than maybe if we don't have anything or don't have anything that we, we feel that is secure, that is an option as well. So when we get into this, we talk about this. This is kind of what the environment looks like. That's what the secondary uh, slide is for. So notice that the user interface would be very similar. Um, you would have that, but we just have where we can actually have this property manager to the right here, which is a 3D experience uh, availability where we can control the life cycle of the documents. So in process or in work or frozen or uh, released, we can go ahead and do that and save that uh, information based, you know, to your to your uh, desktop or save it up to the to the cloud. The other one here is just that premium, which is if you for any trial, if you want, you want to kick the tires on this and try it out, you can download Jeff's uh, premium for 30 days for free. And you don't have to do any, you don't have to give them a credit card or anything like that. They'll let you just download it and then kind of go from there. And that's where the location for the uh, download is. And you'll be able to, to try it if you choose to do so. Um, you can download it today as long as you don't activate it. The day you ex run the executable and actually install it is the day that the th your 30 days starts. So if you want to download it now and that started to and not install it until Monday, it doesn't take very long to install, just a few minutes. And then you can go ahead and do that and try it out and kick the tires on and see what you like. All right, I want to thank everyone for that.